Okay, so uh, you can now have enabled the responses in the attendance sheet. So you can actually start uh, marking your attendance. And uh, this sheet should be available till the lecture lasts. So, you know, like you have to mark your attendance somewhere in between. <clears throat> And good morning to everyone. Yeah. And by the way, when I start the lecture, I usually do not look at the chat. So if you have any queries, just unmute yourself and, and talk to me. Okay. Uh, you don't have to take permission or anything. If you have a question, just unmute yourself and ask the question.
Okay, how many people do we have now? <coughs> Only 33 till now. But it is increasing. Uh, sir, our last class just ended, so. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. No, that is why I knew that. Uh, yeah, uh, I have shared a sheet with you guys, a Google form with you guys over email. Just check your email. Just check your and uh, you have to just submit the form. So let me submit the form and get your attendance. Uh, Tia, just try it once more. Uh, I was not, uh, I, I, it was not accepting responses. Now I can see at least 20 people have already uh, marked attendance. Can you please check it again? Yeah, I really, Dhruv, I really don't know how to disable this thing. I, I hate this WebEx actually. Uh, if, even if you know how to do that, please guide me. I will do it. Okay. Participant and what is it? Mute on entry, is it or no? Yeah, I'm not sure. I I am not a fan of uh, of of WebEx actually, uh, and I have very little idea of how to operate this thing. Good morning, everyone. Hello? Yeah. Good morning, sir. Sir, the form is saying that you need permission. I don't know which pop-up screen will uh, pop out when I click on it. Uh, uh, I don't know yeah, whether which... my attendance is submitted or not. What is your role number, Tia? 27 it 27 it 27 yeah i don't have it as of now share your screen with me with us and we'll have a look if the problem is being faced by others as well uh, how do i allow you uh, yes sir i'll make the option too yeah i'm just sharing this uh, this presenter thing with you so you can share your screen we'll have a look yeah, Himanshu, do you know how to do that? I don't know, actually. I'm having the same problem with the attendance form. Uh, yeah, by the way, this, this, someone has just mentioned, use your triple ITL email address. If you have multiple Google addresses, uh, Google emails configured, it is possible that you might be trying to fill it from your personal email. In that case, it will... Okay, what is it? Participant, mute on entry. Okay, thank you. Whomsoever it is. Uh, Participant mute on entry. But would this stop the beep? Okay, nice. Then no. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> uh, no, no, no. It's still beeping there. Yeah. So that mute thing, I think, is about uh, as soon as you join. Uh, I guess your mics will be off. This is what that that setting says. Uh, it is not really. The same thing as uh, I'm not sure. Like I have, been, I have done that. Uh, uh, Kushagra, I have uh, made that setting. Excuse so, me. Yeah, yeah. Sir, I don't know how to share the screen, but I can't give the attendance part. Uh, okay. Um, good question. Even I don't know how to share the screen. Uh, I have made you the presenter. So on the on the bottom. Actually, it's. Should... It's opening while you're using incognito window. If you have multiple accounts, <laughs> okay. Just sign in with your mail, college mail in, in incognito window. It will open. Okay, I have made you the presenter, Priya. Now I don't know how to make myself the presenter. Okay. Uh... But I don't know how to share the screen, but it's okay. If you all those who are not able to, uh, you know, not able to mark the attendance, just drop me a mail, email, and then figure it out. Uh, huh, someone has said, what is it? Edit preferences, participants, uncheck joining meeting. Edit uh, preferences, <coughs> participants. Okay. Please and participants join meeting. 
Yeah, I it's already actually uh, okay, let me just first uh, make myself the presenter at least. Uh, show myself with floating windows. How the hell do I use this? Mm. That share option itself is now disabled for me after I <coughs> I made the uh, connect to a video stream, switch to audio. Ah, uh, this. Okay, let me start the video again. Dan, I'm not getting this. Mm. See, Tia, I, I made you the presenter, and now I can't get that presentation thing back. <laughs> uh, yeah, guys, I'm just trying to do this thing. I knew that uh, this, this will take a lot of time, so today's lecture is actually not that long. Uh, I have these things, alert, participant joins the meeting. It is not really ticked off on, right? I mean, I'm not sure what is the option. I think this you guys have to do, is it? This, uh, 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 Tia, please make me the presenter. I'm, I'm requesting you. You'll have to click on the three dots that are, uh, you know, next to my, uh, what is it? My, my so please video. guide me what I have to do. I don't know anything about this app. Yeah, I'm not too different from you, Tia. Uh, so what you have to do is uh, just try to. Uh, okay, can you just unjoin and join again, Tia? Maybe that will make me the presenter by default. Okay, sir. Uh, yeah, so uh, showing forms are disabled in Gmail. Yeah, guys, I think the same issue is there. Um, you have to check that uh, you are doing it from your own uh, uh, triple IT email. If you do it in incognito mode, it will not work. If you do it using some other uh, Gmail thing, uh, yeah, uh, so that won't work. Uh, so Mohit and uh, Aryan and Frerak, uh, is it something that I have to do because my has Tia gone? Yes, I am now the presenter. Great. Okay. I am back now. Yeah, and but I'm and I'm the presenter. That is the best part. Uh, okay. Uh, can you guys see my screen now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great, great, yes, sir. great. Yes, sir. So I could somehow get to get this thing to work. Yes, sir. <laughs> nice. So now in WebEx meeting, I have this. Okay. Now this is what it says: participant joins the meeting. It is actually unchecked. So I'm not sure what the hell is happening here. Uh, Okay. Um, yeah. As I said, you know, I hate this. What we'll do is something like this. Uh, how do I just expand this thing? Like this. Okay. Yeah, something like this. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is horrible, actually. We'll do from the next week is uh, I'll give you the I lecture. I have mailed you a link regarding um, how to remove beep sound. Actually, it is on YouTube that how to remove the beep, beep sound. Okay, so that I'll, I'll probably I'll have to watch a YouTube video. Then I'm pretty sure I won't yeah. be able to do it right now. Uh, <laughs> so maybe maybe after the class. Yeah. See, this is the point, right? I mean, uh, uh, if if I have to watch a YouTube video to do something, it means that the software is horrible. Nobody really. Uh, reads help manuals these days, right? I mean, those days are over when people used to read help manuals. Uh, oh, yeah. If I have to, if I have to uh, read a manual, then it means oh, this is the issue. This thing will remain on top. Come on, yeah. Okay, thank you. Regarding the beep sound, uh, okay. Let me try. Oh, it has to be in the. In the web web part. Yeah, I think. Mm. It has to be in the WebEx preferences, is it? Okay. Let me check where is my WebEx thing. Uh, come on, this panel is annoying. I knew this will happen today, so that is why today's lecture is actually not that long. I knew that uh, I'll basically be uh, talking to you guys more than actually teaching. Uh, and 
by the way uh, how is the other classes going on you know anyone can tell, tell me yes. Sir, today only nice. five class, class happened, sir, and uh, until now no because course has begun. Yet. Students are not able oh. to join those classes because those are happening on May. Ah, okay. Is it? So, so things are already difficult. Is it? Yes, sir. <laughs> so this anyhow, I'll just check if I have some preferences thing somewhere, and uh, yeah, it is there preferences. Okay, mm, audio and video. Uh, entry and exit tone, no tone. Yes. Thank you, whomsoever it was, Frederick and Aryan, and there were a couple more. Thank you for educating me. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so I hope this thing doesn't, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I hope this thing doesn't uh, disturb us. I already have attendance for 92 people uh i'm i think it should be around 120 the total strength should be around 120 so uh so so have a look at uh, whomsoever has not been able to do this okay okay guys so let's start yeah by the way before that uh uh, did you guys have a look at the syllabus? Uh, do you have any queries about syllabus about how the course will be will be conducted? Then please shoot. No questions. Very good. Everyone read the the. Uh, everyone has gone through the. Oh yeah, something. Oh yeah, good. Uh. uh Credit system. Uh, so credit system is in. Uh, uh, you're talking about your tip, your uh, overall academic program, or for this particular course. This course, yeah. Okay, so that is exactly the same. Unfortunately, um, I should not say this. I should probably not say this. I'm still a visiting faculty. But basically, uh, the problem here is that uh, the actual weightage the distribution of marks that has been fixed by your uh, your senate or whatever it is okay so uh, you saw that presentation right in the orientation where uh, it was uh, 75 marks for uh, for uh, this end semester exam 30 for mid semester and then and i in that uh, in that lecture that i shared so at least there's one person who has not seen that lecture uh, in that lecture uh, Oh yeah, that chief shepherd. I will I will explain very very well. Yeah, that will start from the next week. But uh, before that, I'll let, let me answer that question from Dhruv. So yes, uh, so there is a fixed pattern actually. It is it is going to be the same exactly in all your courses, not just in this course. Uh, the the weightage is exactly the same. Seventy five for NSM, thirty I think for MIDSM, then another fifteen twenty or something like that for quiz, then another fifteen twenty or something like that for labs. Uh, five marks for attendance, so that just it has to sum up to 150. Uh, uh, that is exactly the same, by the way, in all the courses. So uh, I'm not sure whether you guys have been given that uh, presentation that uh, uh, the the head of uh, examination gave. If uh, if if not, I'll I'll talk to her. I'll just try to get that presentation sent to you. But uh, the idea is that the 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 weightage within the course. That is pre-decided. I have no say in that. Uh, you know, I cannot actually change it. Um, from from the, from the institute where I come from, that is actually completely in the hand of the instructor. So I could have basically said, I'll just take thirty percent marks for end sem and twenty percent for mid sem, and rest everything is lab. Uh, that would that was the way I would have done it. Uh, but that I cannot do here. You know, I have to follow the guidelines of uh, of whatever the 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 senate has decided upon. So yes, that is the issue. Any other questions? I'll come to the sheep and shepherd thing right now, uh, in a, in a minute. But any other questions? And as I said, in case uh, you have a query, you can always uh, unmute yourself between the lecture and you can ask me. Okay, so it, I'm not really perturbed by someone asking in between. In fact, I actually like uh, the scenario where uh, people actually ask me questions. Uh, I feel really boring if nobody is talking to me. That is why this this online thing is even more difficult because uh, uh, 
in a in on in online setting i really don't know how many of you have just uh, switched off your video and my and your uh, and muted your mic and sleeping so so it's very difficult for me to teach but uh, uh i'll i'll try my best in this mode whatever i can so any questions guys i will explain the shepherding system late uh, just after this but if you have any other queries please please shoot Uh, so, yeah, go ahead. What do you mean by uh, books for secondary purpose in your uh, uh, hmm. introduction okay. sheet? So it's like this. Um, when you when you do a course, uh, there are two objectives to that particular course, right? One is that uh, there will be a syllabus, and you have to do well with the syllabus, and you have to get a good grade, and uh, <laughs> yeah, tha- good. So Tia has marked the attendance very good. uh so 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 the primary purpose probably for taking any course is that uh, you, you do well in the syllabus right whatever is defined and uh, the secondary purpose of each course is that you also want to grow as an individual so um there might be certain things that you learned as a by product of doing a course okay it is not really something that uh, that was asked in the exams it was not really something that uh, the instructor stressed upon but while you were doing this so for example i am also currently uh, the instructor for a course called advanced programming language for btech third semester and i realized that a good number of the students in the in the in the batch they they had their deficiencies not in java but uh, but in bash okay so they were not properly introduced to the linux ecosystem when they joined the institute if they had uh then then many of the queries that i received in email would not have come to me you know they were not really java queries they were they were they were issues with how to use linux as an operating system so when i say secondary purpose i basically mean uh it's not just uh, that you are going to learn c and some programming in this course uh, my secondary purpose is that you also become um uh, more comfortable using linux as an operating system okay because there is a good chance that a good number of you might have been using windows and uh, uh is unsurvivable i am not sure what unsurvivable means through what uh, uh, uh you can actually unmute and and and, and talk as well so uh, so any of this so the people are too advanced in the community actually so uh, uh, no, that is like us that it's not like that and this is something that you have to understand uh, there is a a wide uh, misinformation about linux that linux is hard actually let me tell you if you if you are a computer science engineer or an it engineer linux is going to be life saver for you let me tell you this okay uh there will be occasions when you will simply bang your head with windows because there is something that you don't really know how to do or or windows doesn't allow you to do that but with the uh, with linux that is not the case you know almost everything is uh, dual boot is fine guys dual boot is fine uh, in fact i will uh, in the next lecture we'll talk about virtual machines okay this is very important uh, that is that is what i was going to say kushakar that uh, uh, if you can see this i can here okay this is this is i always have this on my on my laptop whether it is a windows laptop whether it is a mac i always have uh, uh, uh it's up to you gaurav you know removing i am not saying remove because you might have paid for that in fact that is the only reason i am keeping windows in one of my laptops because when i bought it i paid some money for it so i don't really want to you know do away with that money but what i do is i just put virtual box as someone has said so virtual box we'll talk about virtual box uh, at length in the next lecture so we will not go in that direction today but uh, basically the idea that, that the question that i was answering to is the secondary purpose of this course is to make you as comfortable as possible with with linux okay in fact i am dedicating a whole week, the first week you know, to this is week 0 week 1 is completely uh, dedicated to to talking about linux okay Uh, and it is it is not something that is part of this course you know i am not supposed to teach you uh, linux as such um, but but i am doing that because as as computer science professionals you have to get away from from the windows ecosystem 
I'm not a I'm not a person who hates Microsoft, but uh, I'm just saying that 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 you know in order to grow as as an individual, it's not just the programming that you need. Um, you also need to have some system uh, administrator skills, and those skills you can only develop if you start using Linux on day to day basis. And uh, actually, today Linux has has evolved a lot. Uh, I use the probably the easiest of uh, uh, of of operating systems right now is is Ubuntu. So I use Ubuntu, and uh, you know I'm not a person who's using Linux for show off. You know I'm not an Arc Arch user. Uh, I use I use Linux for my day to day work, and and for that Ubuntu. Uh, Abhishek, I, I mean. It's up to you. I'm not a I'm not a person who would uh, ask you to use a particular distro. Uh, I'm not a particular distro fan. Uh, usually in the Linux community, you will have have a lot of wars between uh, people who use Debian versus people who use Arch versus people who use uh, Red Hat. I'm not going to to ask you to do that. I personally use Ubuntu. Uh, Ubuntu is far more easier to you know the 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 graph of learning for Ubuntu. Is is very simple. Okay, it is almost like Windows. Uh, you know, Windows for Linux is basically Ubuntu. Uh, people say Mint is even easier, and uh, but I'm not sure. I, Ubuntu is 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 very simple and easy to use uh, uh, operating system. I I I have no idea about any other thing. Oh, okay, so uh, Kushagra, Ubuntu is basically a flavor of Linux. Okay, Linux is the overall. Uh, uh, umbrella term okay and ubuntu is one of the many types of linux uh, there are many other types of linux as well as someone has already said uh, there is there is uh, you know debian there is red hat there is arch there is mint uh, there are not kali yeah someone said kali uh, mac is not really linux i mean basically the, the the issue is there is a term called asterisk nix okay nix systems uh, the the nix systems are basically the systems which uh, were developed over the Unix operating system. Okay, the Unix operating system does not did not have any UI. It was basically all command line. And uh, then over the over that uh, you have a lot of uh, operating systems today, which essentially uh, uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. So there is already a lever of Kali, for example. Uh, so that is the thing. I am not going to instruct you to 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 uh, use any particular distro. It's up to you. Uh, having said that. Oh yeah, I do not have the space, guys. Aryan, uh, you know this this Mac does not have the space to to update to Big Sur. I need some fifteen or sixteen GB, and because I I run so many VMs, I don't have uh, any space left. I probably only have three GB or so. I keep on getting this uh, notification every day that you know you don't have space left. Anyhow, uh, okay. So basically, the secondary purpose is to teach you Linux. As I said, this is not the primary focus. So you will have to pick up Linux on your own. Okay, you will have to uh, learn Bash. You will have to do a lot of stuff. In fact, your seniors want you to use a platform for coding. I said perfectly fine. I it is fine if you if you use a platform for coding. But I said not in the beginning of the course. In the beginning of the course, it's not just about running your programs on a on a on a command prompt kind of window. It's also about learning those things. Okay, you learn Bash. Then you will try to bang your head with the uh, with C. Uh, so Bash is basically the the equivalent of command prompt in in. Uh, it's not technically true, but for now, just assume that uh, Bash is basically the you know the terminal window. That is right. The, the right term is terminal window. Is the equivalent of your command prompt in in uh, on the on the Linux systems. And uh, Bash is one particular. Uh, how do I say this? You don't understand what a shell is, but basically the the, the set of commands that you can give on a terminal window. Uh, there are different uh, sets of those commands. Bash is the most popular. Uh, Bash is used by most of the people. There are other others as well. There is a C shell. Uh, there is a uh, bond shell. So, but but usually uh, Bash is basically the most common one. Um, uh, so anyhow, let's. Uh, uh, any other questions, guys? Otherwise, I'll start. I'll talk about the shepherding system. Okay, so I'll start with. So basically, this shepherding system is a very interesting thing. Yeah, the class is recorded. Yeah, I I, I set it in the settings of WebEx. That is probably the only good thing I found in WebEx that uh, 
uh, the the uh, recording could be made automatic. So as soon as I started the class, the recording started. Um, yeah, so that is why you know you just have to listen to this. You will get these videos later, and uh, um, so labs. I will tell you how what will happen with the lab. Uh, yes, lab will be one day in a week. Okay, uh, because the problem is, uh, I ideally wanted it to split in two, but uh, I understand that uh, we have a shortage of uh, postgraduate students in IIIT Lucknow. So the number of TAs, the teaching assistants that I get are limited right so for 240 students i only have 60 days and uh you know i cannot overwork them as well so uh unfortunately uh i will be a part of the lab so don't worry you know if, if something gets uh, you know if, if a ta cannot resolve your issue i'm always there uh, and this is what i do with btech third semester anyhow so when they are not able to resolve the problem the tas are not able to resolve the problem uh they just give me a call and uh, I come online and I resolve the issues. So, so don't worry. You know, in the lab, we'll 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 try our best. Basically, you know, in this in this online scenario, uh, we have limitations, but we'll try our best uh, to 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 make make you as comfortable as possible and and make sure that you learn as much as you can. Okay. So uh, about the shepherding system. So this shepherding system is is a concept that comes from a particular community of software engineers. They are called the design patterns community. You don't need to know what this community is, but this is a very good concept that they use. Uh, so what they do is something like this. There is a concept of, uh, of shepherding. So what you do is, um, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the physical world, you will see that uh, when there are sheep, sheep will just wander around, right? If you leave them in a, in a field, they'll go willy nilly in different directions. So there is a shepherd who just guides them to the right direction, right? Uh, and this is the job of the shepherd that you basically take them to the right direction. So uh, what we can, what we'll do is for every topic that we will study, um, I will ask you guys to present it to your peers. Okay? Why do I do that? Because let me be very honest. If I leave you guys alone, you know, if I just say, okay, I'm giving you the lectures, just take the lectures, and you know, whenever you want. Uh, I'm not commenting, but this is basically human habit that uh, over a period of time you will become complacent. Okay, you say, okay, the the lecture is there. I'll read probably half an hour before the lecture, one hour before the lecture, maybe during the lecture I'll watch the lecture. Um, so so I don't want these things to happen. Okay, so what it means is uh, uh, in every lecture I will pick some people randomly from your batch, and uh, those people will then be required to discuss they'll they'll be required to actually talk about whatever they learn in the in the last week so i'll give you some three lectures or so usually my lectures won't be that long okay um a typical lecture of mine will never probably uh breach the 15 minute mark okay so in a in a week i'll only give you probably half an hour to to 40 minutes of of lecture Okay, and that will be pre-recorded and I'll give it over to you. So you can watch it once, twice, thrice, whatever you want. Okay, the actual amount of lecturing hours that we have is three hours. So at least, you know, spend one and a half hours on, on watching those lectures. If you don't understand, just stop, pause, go back, uh, you know, read again, uh, so on and so forth. So the idea is that, uh, uh, you know, you should watch those lectures beforehand because on the uh, on the day of lecture, we'll now from, from week one onwards there won't really be lectures there will be tutorials okay so there is a difference between a lecture and a tutorial uh, a lecture is where i speak and you listen a tutorial is basically where you all speak and i listen and uh, you know not not exactly the same but basically you ask me questions and i answer them so in so what i have done here is in order to make you make sure that you guys are studying uh, i'll make you answer each other's queries Okay, so if you have any questions, just uh, just bug your peer. That is usually what you do anyhow, right? I mean, you will do that on the day of uh, a day before mid sem, for example. If you don't know something, you will just go to your friend and say, "Please, padha they are right." That is what you will do. Uh, but uh, but we will do that straight away. Okay, right from day one, uh, it is your friend who is going to teach you. Okay, and the the reason for this is the best way to learn a particular topic is if you try to teach it to someone. Uh, because then you'll have to understand. Okay, what if this, question, this guy asks me a question about it? Okay, what 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 would be my answer? 
uh, I'll be I'll be talking in front of 120 people. What will happen if I am not able to answer? So yeah, I'm I'm not really a person who uh, you know who uses coercion a lot. But yes, this 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 uh, fear of uh, social humiliation is one of the biggest factors for learning. You learn not because no audio. Uh, uh, can you guys hear me or something? Sir, it's it's yeah, okay it's on still... my side. Okay, so guys, maybe the issue is internet speeds, right? I mean, uh, anyhow. So uh, this is what the, the the issue is that if I make you do that, so what will happen is in that one hour lecture, I will pick up three or four of you randomly, and uh, you will start discussing the the topics that we had in the uh, you know in, in that I sent you as as lectures. Now in between, let us see you watched a lecture, but you are not the shepherd, and you had a doubt. Now, the first thing you will do is you will basically shoot the question to your shepherd. You know, did you understand this? So basically, it's like a group discussion. You are discussing it among yourself. I will be a fly on the wall. So now the concept of fly on the wall is like there is a fly on the wall. It keeps on sitting there. It doesn't do anything. Okay. And uh, the fly will only intervene when it feels that uh, you guys have, have gone to some some uh, wrong direction. So I will only unmute myself. Uh, or or I'll, I'll basically, uh, it is possible that someone might actually give a wrong answer. So the shepherd might have un not understood the, the concepts correctly. Uh, so he or she might give you the wrong answer. So I'll only unmute myself and intervene when I feel that the direction is wrong or that the question is, is uh, you know, you are not, you haven't understood the concept. And uh, as I said, the, the actual lecture content in a week will only be about 30 to 45 minutes. So we will sit at least for one hour in a in a week. Okay, it will depend on how uh, you know how complex the 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 week's content was. Sometimes we might need more than one. Sometimes we might be fine with just one. So the overall idea is that we have three lecture slots each for uh, both you know both for both uh, batches. Uh, for so three for you and three for the other. Uh, what is it? CSAI plus CS first whatever it is. so so we have up to three meetings in a in a lecture in a week one is compulsory two and three i'm not sure and towards the end of that that tutorial so around uh, somewhere around 50 minutes or so i will stop you guys and i will say okay now there is going to be a quiz okay quiz based on whatever you have learned so this is why it is even more important for you to bug the the shepherd you know, because there is a there is a chance that in the quiz you are asked the same question that you have a doubt about. So it is very important that if you have a doubt, bug your shepherd. You know, get it cleared in that fifty minutes of time. Uh, and this way, uh, you this is in, I mean, I'm trying this model. I hope this model will be successful. I'm pretty sure other lecturers will will have different ways of teaching you. But uh, but but I am trying to do this model because. I understand the major pain points. You know, most of the time, what happens is that some students will simply simply fall behind, right? Because uh, it's you know not everyone is at the same level. You know, you all you'll all have different understanding of computer science when you entered this institute. But as a teacher, it is my job to consider the last one in the hierarchy, right? I mean, the the person who basically has no idea about computer science that person should also be able to contribute you know and then and i'm pretty sure some of you might be already all advanced programmers so so this this way what happens is i expect those guys who have no experience in computer science to be the most vocal guys during the lecture okay uh, during the tutorial this is your chance uh, it's okay I'll, I'll make you can do that uh, so you have to be the most vocal during those tutorials you have to basically bug your, you know, even if you feel it's it's a very silly question, just don't hesitate. First of all, uh, you know, this is a this is a people skill that you have to learn. You have to learn how to communicate with others. You know, this is a part you have this professional communication course. I'm not sure how much practical things they will teach in that. That will probably be just. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I'm let me not comment on on something like that. So, but but the idea is that. You should learn these people skills as well. When you'll go to industry, there will be team meetings. If you don't have the habit of of uh, intervening when you have a doubt, um, you'll you'll actually be in a very poor shape. So so start this habit straight away. Okay. If you have a doubt, 
stop the people don't be impolite you know be polite with your queries but 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 ask your queries okay don't let the doubts fall back fall you know fall in the in the pit and as i said uh, some of you have already talked to me over email uh, i try my best to reply to the emails as quickly as possible so i have configured it on my phone uh, so for me email and and whatsapp are basically the same uh, i get a notification every time i get an email um, of course sometimes i'm busy i'm doing some other stuff um, but as soon as i get a chance to reply to the emails i do it so so don't hesitate you know even if let us say you watched a lecture you have a doubt and uh, you want to clarify it before the tutorial itself uh, just drop me an email okay and ask us i could not understand this part can you just tell me what is it um, so please do that you know uh, in fact i probably sent you a meeting link in the in the lecture zero that will be my my personal meeting room whenever you want to talk to me uh, just drop me an email if i need to connect to you and let us say have a look at your screen um, i will just uh, you know ask, ask you to come on that meeting room so please you know try your best it is going to be a very uh, uh, you know it's going to be a very heavy course let me be very very frank straight away right there there are going to be instances when you will hate me like like anything okay uh, but this is important okay this uh, i i wrote this quote in the first le in the lecture zero that the best way to teach someone uh, swimming is to just drop them in the pond okay pond of cold water uh, the the fear of of death is the best teacher so so basically i'm just going to put you guys in the pond uh, i am there i am probably the lifeguard I, it, it is my responsibility to not let you drown but you will have a near death experience I'm, I'm please don't don't take that literal in literal sense the idea is that i am going to put you in extremely uh, uncomfortable situations and you have to get out from that situation fighting okay and this is the way i have learned you know this is the way uh, i was taught in the institute i come from you know they they used to do it every day i did my mtech from iit kanpur i did my btech from a private engineering college so you can understand the kind of gap that was there and when i when i went to iit kanpur this is the only thing i learned you know that is how they teach uh, the lectures are pretty pretty simple okay that is nothing but they'll give you an assignment and you'll have to do it in 3 days of time uh, using a tool that you have never heard of okay uh, so you you'll do night outs you will you will stay in the lab for the whole night and by the end of the day uh, you'll have something to give okay even if you are not you are not getting 10 out of 10 even if you got 5 out of 10 the amount of learning that you will have will be something that will stay with you for life long okay so so this is the idea that even if you are not doing well in the labs try to learn as much as possible because the overall idea is that you become a better programmer it's not about getting grades right grades let's be honest if you if you know grades are something that is a part of the system so we have to give grades but uh, but the the overall idea is that you should learn right so any questions or i'll start with today's lecture it's a short lecture i only need about 20 minutes of time so i just spent this time with you guys so that i wanted so, so that you get you become more comfortable with the course okay so let's go um, I'm not sure how to hide this thing. Uh, okay. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. So I have a suggestion, sir. Uh, like we are from a background where we don't have any knowledge in programming or computing and mm -hmm. we are trying our best to cope up with you. So I hope uh, you go from the basics, sir, as uh, okay. we don't have any so, previous knowledge in this. <laughs> so I, let's, let's go through this lecture. And I'll talk to you at the end of this lecture. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure how this thing will work. I'll have to probably put it here. So this is our first lecture, guys. Okay, so let's start. So you know this device, right? What is it? Anyone can unmute and say yes. No, this is the device. Yes, sir. It's a calculator. You guys have used it, right? Yeah. So it is a computing device. It computes something. Okay. Uh, at least, you know, mostly the, the, the normal calculators will do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, probably some percent thing on that. Uh, but that is basically it, right? I mean, this is the kind of thing that you expect from a calculator. This one is something that you are going to use now. You know, have you guys bought it already? 
good good so basically this is it is it is i mean uh, technically it is the same thing but uh, it's just that it can probably do way more than just basic arithmetic right it can do a lot of things there are a lot of buttons in here that uh, sarth uh, do you have any question no sir no sir okay okay just unmeet you know just uh, meet yourself yeah so so uh, yeah so so basically it is <laughs> it is exactly it is, it is basically the same you both you know people call it calculator it's not really the same but yeah uh, for a layman it is exactly the same and it's just that it has far more buttons okay so so uh, people probably would feel that okay it, it can probably do more than addition subtraction and then what about these right you guys all all have it and uh, you understand that this is something beyond those calculators right i mean these devices um, you can actually use them to perform a higher level tasks right so basically you use a laptop to watch a movie uh, you use the phone to chat to your friend these are higher level tasks right which which does not certainly uh, map to the kind of 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 things that we do with other devices right so you use a washing machine what is it it what is it used for it is used for washing clothes uh, but but you can understand that they are both probably running on the same fuel right you are you're just uh, using electricity you know even this these devices run on electricity you just charge the batteries and uh, then you do it but essentially the fuel is the same right the it is it is the same electricity but still uh, you know somehow these devices are at a different level altogether you know you use them for performing tasks which are much closer to human beings okay than let us say towards a machine right and plus these can do a lot of things it, you can multitask with these i can i am uh, simultaneously presenting a presentation and at the same time chatting with you guys and, and there is a video stream going on so there are so many things that these devices can do altogether right so you know the question is uh, how do these devices do what they want to do and, and let's just just start with the calculator for example right so uh, i'm not talking about the calculator the one that that was addition subtraction but basically the, you know if you want to build a calculator how will you build build it right uh, let's take the example of just addition i just want to build addition i want to uh, somehow achieve addition of two numbers how do i do that um, to to ask this question let us just go back in time okay let's go back to our our uh kindergarten and nursery days uh we probably all saw this device right uh, what is it called anyone abacus abacus abacus, abacus. abacus. Yeah. right so this is how abacus. you use you guys probably started counting uh you will basically you know use the beads from here to there and then you say what is 2 plus 3 so you the teacher will ask you to put two beads on this side then three beads on this side and then you basically count 1 2 3 4 5 so this is how uh, this is how we learned how to uh, how to add two digits um, and this is another thing that you should understand that essentially we only learned how to to add two digits right we only learned how to add let's say 9 plus 6 and and 5 plus 3 or 8 plus 2 and then over that we were taught a number system okay uh, this is where we were told that if a particular digit is at a particular position ones tens hundreds thousands ten thousands the interpretation of that digit changes right so if a digit one is at uh, at the hundreds position it is not really one but it is basically one into 10 to the power 2 similarly if the digit is at the thousand position it is one into 10 to the power 3 so what so where does this 10 came from so so basically this is the number system that we used okay uh, okay i'm not sure whether you can this is better okay so so basically this is what we learned we only learned adding two digits and then we learned the concept of a carry over so so if there are two digits i i add them there is a carry it goes to the next digit okay and then i this is horrible <laughs> okay um so uh, uh so this is how we learned how we learned uh, addition right and uh, this number system that i that i talked about it uses the base 10 so Uh, i'm not sure what is the 10 plus 2 curriculum these days but do they actually teach you about number systems you know binary number system trinary hexadecimal do they teach you at 10 plus 2 level now no sir okay no sir no sir so 
so basically what happens is something like this uh, there is a number system that we use okay so essentially uh, these digits that we use they are uh, from 0 to 9 okay there are only 9 uh, there are only 10 digits which comprises of the, uh, which which can actually create the whole number system any number in the world can be represented by those 10 digits right and uh, why 10 because basically what happens is we use a number system in our day to day life where the base is 10 okay so essentially that is what i said if a particular digit is at the tens position it is basically digit multiplied by 10 to the power 1 uh, if it is at the hundreds position it is digit multiplied by 10 to the power 2 10 to the power 3 10 to the power 4 so essentially the numbers that you create in your day to day life they all belong to base 10 right because uh, you know the digits the interpretation of those digits are based on base 10 so there is an there is there is an uh, uh, there is an, an implicit understanding where i say uh, a digit on the hundreds position is not just the digit it is it basically means digit multiplied by 10 to the power 2 so now this is this is basically how we learned addition that uh, you first add the ones positions and then there is a carry it goes to the tens position you 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 sum it up again if there is another carry you go to the uh, you know the hundreds position so on and so forth now the overall idea is exactly the same for for computers okay they also would if they want to add two numbers they would do exactly the same what is different though is that they uses a base of two okay this is something that is probably the first thing you should understand in computer science that uh, computers don't use base 10 they use base 2 not just computers basically everything in the computing world they use base 2 so how does it work basically it's something like this um in base 10 so whenever i say base n what it really means is uh, you basically have uh, n num n digits in that particular number system and uh, when you write a particular number in that number system you start from like you start like this the the rightmost uh digit is n to the power zero the the one just next to it is n to the power one then if you move one more uh, position uh, on the left it is n to the power two so on and so forth now if you put the value of n equal to 10 this is what we have been doing till now right so if you want to represent number 243 this is basically 3 into 10 to the power zero uh, uh four you know plus four into 10 to the power one plus 2 into 10 to the power 2 so on and so forth now imagine a world where instead of doing this 10 to the power i use the base 2 so now i'm going to multiply stuff by 2 to the power something okay so the first digit in my number is you know something into 2 to the power 0 the second is something into 2 to the power 1 something into 2 to the power 2 so on and so forth Another issue with the with with these number systems is that the number of digits that you can have in a base which uh, in in a base n system is actually n, right? So that is why we only have ten digits in the in the base ten system, zero, one, two, three, up to nine. Okay, but if you want to use base two, you can only have two digits, right? Zero and one. So that is where all that bad bit thing comes into picture. Why do you see those numbers as one zero 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 one zero zero zero? You know, if you have if you have seen any of the computer science things, they say computers work on zeros and ones. This is basically the reason. If you want to use base two for uh, for your number system, if you want to use base two for doing your addition, multiplication, uh, you know, division, and all those in all those things, uh, the only two digits that you will have is zero and one, and then you represent each number. With the help of this system 2 to the power 0 2 to the power 1 um, so on and so forth i'm not going to go into greater detail of what the binary system is this is something that you will anyhow read over a course of your syllabus uh, i think maybe the guys who are going to teach the electronics engineering will probably uh, teach you that but the idea is that uh, you know the re the way computers do addition is different from the way we do it we do it using the base 10 computers do it using the base two um now the question is why two right i mean why it is not three why it is not four why it is not five seven nine why two uh the the reason that it is two is because uh, the the whole world of computers you know the whole world of computing 
uh, devices, um, they actually work on something called as transistors. So transistors is an electronic component. Um, you will actually read about transistors in your course on uh, basic electronics. So this transistor can have only two states. It can either be on or it can be off, right? So that is why right, you understand that, that uh, there are two things that I can represent with a transistor. It could be a zero or a one based on whether the transistor is, is, is off or on. So the whole of computer science is built, you know, the whole of computing devices is built over, you know, uh, millions of millions and billions of transistors. And it is because these transistors can only have two states that the computers actually work over over base two. That if if let us say, you know, in the in a theoretical world, if we can build a transistor that has 10 different states, okay, that can can represent 10 different states, then we can actually start uh, using the, the base 10 uh, with computers as well. But currently, you know, the, the current state of the art is that the transistors have only two states, on or off. So the convention, we in computer science, we just adopted the convention that on means one, off means zero. Okay. Uh, and I said, you will, you will read more about transistors on your course in basic electronics. Um, and this is uh, right. So since the binary system has only two digits, zero and one, it is natural to use that for all the computer devices. Now, uh, so basically what you can do, yeah, I, I don't understand yes, one and I, I, I have disabled it in front of you. I'm not sure what is the issue. Uh, so, uh, so using maybe someone's mic is on, not sure. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, Dhruv, I did not know that. So, uh, so using the transistors, you can actually do something, right? So, you, as I told, uh, one thing that you can do is basic arithmetic. You can add numbers, you can subtract numbers, so on and so forth. Uh, there are some logical operations as well. How many of you have heard about the term Boolean algebra? Okay, yeah. Uh, Sorry. I mean, I'm just asking, is it a part of the 10 plus 2 curriculum, Boolean algebra? Yes, sir. We had a briefing in modern physics, sir, regarding Boolean algebra and also yeah. in maths. Uh, uh, sir, it's upon the schools they okay. teach us or not. It's fine. So, so basically, what is it? Is something like this. Uh, Boolean algebra is basically a whole field of algebra, as it says, um, which is which is where what, uh, you know, computers work over. Um, it's not that difficult. Basically, it can be summarized as 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 this. So, um, in Boolean algebra, a variable can only have two values, zero or one. Okay. Um, I didn't read the chat. If you have anything important, you can unmute and just tell me. Okay. Uh, so, you, I'm I'm fine with 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 pausing me at any time. So. So the variables in Boolean algebra can only take one of the two values. It can either be a zero or one. So assume that you have an X variable, but that variable can only take two values, either zero or one. Okay, no other value is possible for that variable. Similarly, you have X, Y, Z. You know, you can have any number of variables in the Boolean algebra, but they can all only take one of the two values, either zero or one, nothing else. Then there are three operations defined over the over these variables, right? So in in your typical mathematics, you have the concept of a function, right? So you would say uh, f x equal to x square plus two x plus three, right? So this is a function over one variable. If I have uh, two variables, f x comma y, I can say f x comma y is basically x square plus y square plus two x y, something like that, right? So you have read about functions. Uh, so in Boolean algebra, there are three basic functions, okay? There is the AND function. So what does the AND function do? It says that uh, if I say, you know, if I'm, if, if, if I'm saying, by the way, the AND function takes two or more Boolean variables. So it, it cannot be fx. It has to be at least fx comma y. There can be more variables. It could be f, x comma y comma z comma a, b, c, d. But there has to be at least two variables for the function uh, AND to be applicable. And the value of AND, it returns a value one if both the inputs or basically all the inputs that, that were given. So all the variables, if they have the value one, the AND function returns one. And, uh, uh, okay, I'm not sure what is the comment. Uh, so if, if the AND function, uh, if all the variables have value one, so let us say it is F of X comma Y comma Z, if X equal to one, Y equal to one, Z equal to one, AND function returns a one, otherwise, if, if any one of these is variables are zero, 
then AND function will return a zero. The OR function is kind of the opposite, right? Uh, AND will ask that all the values of a particular, uh, all the input variables have the value one, but uh, OR function will say even if either one of them, you know, have value one, I'll just give you one, okay? And uh, so the idea of OR is that uh, you think about this, you know, let us say I have a function, uh, 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 I, have a, I have a gate somehow, and this gate uh, allows people to go or not. You know, it, it, it stops people. There, there is an entry and there is an exit. Uh, the AND gate is something where it will basically allow all people to go through only if all the inputs are true. So it's basically if all the inputs are one, then AND will say one. OR will mean that basically if anyone comes inside, I'll just let you go. So essentially, if any of the input variables, X, Y, Z, P, Q, R, whatever it is, if any one of these variables have the value one, OR will give you the output one. And then there is a NOT function, which is basically the inversion. So uh, NOT is, is applicable to a single variable, okay? So it's a one variable function, one and only one. You cannot have X, X comma Y. It's only FX or FY or FZ. And this will just return the opposite. So if the if the value x or value of x is zero, it will return one. If the value of x is one, it will return zero. Do you have any queries? You know, you can unmute and ask me. Okay, um, good. So, uh, yes. It was about the transistor. So hypothetically speaking, will transistor with base ten be more efficient than a transistor with base two? Efficient is a is a very uh, you know. Uh, what can I say? Subjective question. You know, when you say efficient, what exactly does it mean? Does it mean efficient in terms of energy consumption? Does it mean efficient in terms of space on 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 a on a PCB? Does it mean efficient in terms of uh, of time? Uh, so so yeah. it's it's a very difficult question to ask uh, to answer straight away. First of all, it's a hypothetical thing, but um, so it's about efficient saying... in terms of Go ahead. in terms of efficient time. in terms of performance. Um, it should be, you know, again, this, this is a hunch. Uh, it should be because the tasks that we perform, okay, that is in the decimal system. If the machines that we use, if they, they, they basically have to change all the numbers from decimal system to binary system and vice versa. So yes, you know, uh, hypothetically, if we can somehow build a transistor, which can simulate 10 different states, it should be faster. Uh, but then again, the term faster is a very difficult thing to say because you will study in, in electronics engineering what exactly happens, how does the flow of electrons happen, okay? So it is possible that if you build a 10-state transistor, the flow of electron, just to manage that, it becomes a slower uh, component, okay? So that is why it's very difficult to say whether it will be more efficient or not, okay? Uh, the only thing we can tell right now is that we only have two-state transistors, so everything has to be done in binary. Any other queries, guys? Sir, in current time, can we have a three-state transistor? Uh, as of now, we don't have. Maybe you you will do something in that uh, that field. You know, just uh, study electronics well and do something. Uh, but as of now, we don't have. Sir, Any don't other the questions? Some computers work on two qubits, so we have four states instead of two. See, it's like this. Uh, everything that you you can always build stuff that is beyond this so you so you have to understand that computing is different from electronics okay um computing is a layer that comes on top of your electronics your electronics is going to be exactly the same okay they they have to be uh imitated oh by the way do you have a lecture at 11. Uh, no sir no sir like no sir so sorry so i'll take probably five to ten minutes more so uh so you can yeah, take uh, how much <laughs> good, good, very good. So, so basically, uh, you know, computing is a term that is on top of your electronics. Okay, your electronics is basically all capacitors, inductors. Uh, you know, uh, capacitors, inductors. You guys would know, right? That you would have studied at uh, yes. at Yes, sir. So, so we use sir. those capacitors and inductors and resistors to first create a diode. Uh, have you guys read about diodes? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You use yes. So you use diodes to create transistors. And then you use transistors to create uh, microcontrollers. You use microcontrollers to create. So there is a whole hierarchy. Okay, uh, computing only comes once you have a, a, a ready 
so at least at least at you have you have a microcontroller okay maybe not a computer but at least you need to have a microcontroller okay computing starts only beyond that so beyond that you can do whatever computing quantum non quantum whatever computing you want to do that starts from that level is it clear no so my yes sir more the base only become what if we have a four possible states of a particular uh, base unit i don't i'm not sure if it's a transistor or not uh see the, the the base four thing you know you have to understand that uh, computers can in fact work in any base it's just that at the level of your electronics if you if your electronic components can only have two possible states it has to be simulated it has to be emulated okay uh, you can emulate any base you know i can basically do hexadecimal uh, stuff using my 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 laptop hexadecimal means base 16 um but that doesn't mean that my hardware is changing my hardware is exactly the same um i'm using because as i said right that has to be built in the hardware itself you have to come up with a transistor that can have four states you know uh, uh, you can you can do any you, know, you can do your own computing in any base you want but in order for the hardware to support it it has you, you must have those hardware components that can that can imitate it i'm not sure i'm uh, i'm able to answer the question what exactly is the question no sir actually the thing is what i've uh, read about i'm not sure how true it is what i've read is basically instead of using uh, just two states it's on and off they use a uh, four states it's on off on on we're using a combination of two qubits yes yeah, so, so, it's okay so so you know the whole yeah. concept of on 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 off or that itself is basically a boolean function you have to understand a boolean function right. of of two variables what are the possible states it will have it will have four states right the the moment you say on 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 off off on and off off it means it is not really a four state thing it is basically uh, some set of if you use two transistors what will you get right now you have four states it could on off 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 okay it is exactly the same you know you are you can have three transistors and then you have eight states okay on 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 off on off off like this right and these are all boolean functions so you no know, if you have n variables um, this is basically how you know we will work you, you your boolean algebra works if you have n boolean variables the possible you know any function of uh, of n variables n boolean variables will have 2 to the power n possible outcomes and you will actually read about how you how it, how to make a truth table um again i'm not sure how many of you have studied boolean algebra so i'm not going into into that direction yes, this is really yeah so this is not my uh, you know this is not something that i can cover uh, ideally i would like to teach you everything but i can't right so uh, there are some other uh, lecturers who will there are some other teachers who will teach you about it mostly you will study this these things in electronics so uh, uh so the idea is that you actually do uh, whatever computing you want to do at the chip level unless you have a chip unless you have a transistor uh, which can emit three or more states uh, you are basically mapping everything to the binary world okay if you have two transistors it will become four states if you have three transistors it will become eight states but that doesn't mean that that the the chip level itself is actually having three different states is it clear Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, so now, uh, then we come to the the first step towards building a computer. Okay. There is something known as a CPU. CPU. What I'm pretty sure you guys would have heard. You know, even if you have not done any programming, uh, the term CPU is very common. You know, people basically say if you if you have a lap, if you have a if you have, I'm pretty I'm you you guys might not have. lived through that era when we used to have desktop computers so there will be a some there will be a cabinet kind of thing that will be kept on the table and people will just call it cpu right um so but but that that is too too abstract to say what exactly is a cpu um a cpu basically con- consists of some some things right what these things are so the first thing it has is it's called a arithmetic logic unit okay so uh Uh, arithmetic you understand you know you have to you have to build a circuit somehow as i said i am not going to tell you how that circuit is built that you will study in electronics but basically with the help of those transistors you will have to build a circuit that can add numbers subtract numbers multiply numbers divide numbers somehow um, 
Then the other thing that you have to do is basically the logical operations. The the three operations I told you, and, or, and not, they are known as logical operations. So if I give two inputs to a particular circuit, okay, let us say first input is zero, the second input is one, and I want this circuit to emulate the OR function, the output of the circuit should be one, because uh, OR gate basically means um, if any of the inputs are one, it should output one. Similarly, if I have made a circuit to emulate the AND function, whatever number of inputs I have, let us say I have two inputs to the circuit, if both the inputs are one, only then will the, the circuit output one. So these are some of the logical operations that I need for a computer to, to, to be able to do. So an arithmetic logic unit is basically a unit where you have circuit, you have electronic circuit where you can give inputs and you get some outputs, okay? These outputs could be, as I said, it could be a, a logical output like and, or, or not, or it could be some arithmetic. So I give it three digits uh, of number A, I give it three digits of number B, and it returns me, you know, a four digit, a four digit output saying, okay, this is the addition of uh, A and B. Something like this, as I said, I'm not going to go in at the hardware level, you will study it in, in your electronics uh, uh, engineering subject. But basically you need some circuit, some circuit that can emulate these things. If you, uh, which can, which can add numbers, which can, which can do this, this and, and, or, and not things. So we call that circuit. Okay. That set of circuit as the arithmetic logic unit. It performs the arithmetic and logical operations. Uh, then you also need another unit because this is just a dumb unit. Essentially you pass uh, current from one end and then you get some current from the other, right? So uh, it's basically flow of electrons from one point to another. But when do these electrons flow? This someone has to decide upon, right? So in computers, we also have something known as a control unit. So control unit is basically the unit which decides when do I need to perform an addition? When do I need to perform an AND or OR operation? When do I need to use a combination of addition and AND or a combination of subtraction and OR? So, so, you know, exactly how do this happens? There is a control unit in the, in the computer. Uh, you, you give it instructions in, in higher, it, at somewhat higher level. So you say, I want to add uh, five with seven. Now you have to convert five into this binary system. It will be, uh, you know, one, zero, one. So, so basically this is a, a change of number system. Again, I'm not going to talk to you about how number systems work. This was just to give you an idea, but basically every number that you have, it has a corresponding representation in the binary system. If you say five, five means one, zero, one. If you say six, it is one, one, zero, so on and so forth. Every number has a binary representation. So the control unit, it is the job of the control unit to basically understand that I have to add one, zero, one to one, one, zero. Okay. This is the idea of control unit. It decides, okay, these are the two inputs and the operation that the, the circuit that I have to activate is the addition circuit, not the subtraction circuit. And uh, the circuit that, that should be used for the next instruction and the next instructions, all these things are the part of the control unit. The control unit decides when to use the ALU, basically. Um, this control unit, you will actually read how these control units are built in your course on computer organization. You will have it probably in third or fourth semester, something like that. Uh, usually it is in the fourth or third semester, uh, but you will read about how these control units are made in your computer organization course. Then uh, let us say, I, as I said, I, sometimes I will have a carry. I will, I added two digits and now there is a carry and that carry has to go somewhere. It has to, to decide somewhere. So I also need some place to store intermediate results of my computations. So there is something known as registers. So what these registers do is they actually store some values. You, they have the ability to, to, to maintain their state either in zero or one form. Okay. As long as we keep, we have, we keep them powered, they can maintain the state that you say, you ask them to, if you say, tell them maintain zero, they will, they will maintain zero. If you ask them maintain one, they will maintain one. It's not just single digits. They are basically multiple digits. Um, but the idea is a register can actually store a, a sequence of zeros and ones, and you can then retrieve it later at some point in time. Um, and you know, a, a set of eight zeros or ones is called a byte. Okay. Now the question is why eight, you know, why not nine or seven? This is your homework. That is that you will do in your homework. Um, you have to tell me why it is just eight and not seven and nine. So this ALU, this control unit and these registers, 
these basically form the brain of your computer this is essentially the core of everything that your computer even you know something as complicated as uh, streaming and 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 chatting and and sharing presentations all of it essentially gets mapped to these three things alu cu and registers okay? so this is the actual brain of your whole computer where processing happens and we call it the central processing system so this is basically a kind of a block diagram of a cpu you have a control unit you have an alu and you have some registers and by the way please stop me in between if you have any queries i'm not going to ask it again and again okay uh, if you feel any questions you have any questions you can simply stop and ask so now with this we come to something known as the von neumann architecture so the von neumann architecture this is basically probably the first architecture that came out for building a uh i'm sure you can unmute and ask you know i i probably won't see the chats when i when i talk so uh, are registers similar to cache what we have is that what we're talking about uh yes so essentially uh that is what i said right so this is a very basic block diagram so cache is 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 one of the way in which you store data and uh there are different caches or so different levels of caches but yes actually it is not the same as registers but at least at this level you know when when we are just beginning to understand a computer you can basically in this, see cache and registers as the same thing they are not the same thing but uh, for now just assume that cache is basically the, the same as registers um you will again read about cache when you will study your uh, computer organization course okay registers are something different they are not cache but uh, but yeah basically they are a place where you store some stuff and cache is also a place where you store some stuff so for now just assume that they are the same um uh, uh, so 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 yeah any other queries okay so the von neumann architecture is basically the first you know conceptualization of a computer so people actually understood that we'll have to build something like a like a cpu um but it's not just about cpu you know cpu has to take some input right so so i have a unit which can do uh, which can which can add two numbers but which two numbers to add okay uh, that i'll have to tell the cpu somehow so i need to put some some mechanism with the help of which i can give inputs to this circuit okay and similarly once the computation has been performed uh, i need to somehow catch the output of this right so i also need some output uh, and let us say you know i want to add this i want to perform the same operation repeated times okay and this will be a thing that you will see many times in your uh, uh, in your computer science uh, 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 journey where computers are very good at doing repeated stuff okay so you are supposed to do the same task but let us say 1000 times or one or 10000 times or 1 lakh times or 1 million times so so what people thought was you know we should not be uh, you know giving those inputs every time and asking uh, the cpu to do it let us put some memory okay so basically some position where i'll i'll go and write i'll basically say this is what you are supposed to do cpu and please do it 10000 times and then the cpu happily do, does it 10000 times and then just said okay i am done okay so you need some kind of a memory some place where uh, you can actually go and write the inputs for the cpu and the cpu too because it will probably be much faster than human beings um, even doing the stuff in for 10000 times it will probably do it within a second so where will it put the output you know whatever is the output of the the computations it can put it at some place some central place where you can put the inputs and where the cpu can put the outputs so we called it memory okay so let's say uh, we had another memory to the computer and this architecture of a computer was originally known as the von neumann architecture so now this is what it looks like you this part already know this is the cpu now i am saying there is some mechanism give input to the cpu and some mechanism to take the output okay that mechanism itself you don't have to worry about okay that you will study in your electronics and computer organization stuff but basically this is a cpu and you need to interact with the cpu you can you can give inputs and you can take outputs from it and then there is place which the cpu can use as a as a helper okay so instead of sending it directly to the cpu i just put it here uh, again how do i put it is is a different thing but as i said Uh, i put it here and then cpu just keeps on uh, fetching the the instructions from this memory it will keep on doing the computations and then storing the results back in the memory 
and then at some convenient time i can just uh, take out the output from this memory okay so uh, the connectors here the term that we the official term that we use here is buses now this is another term that you might have heard a number of times in your in your life but you might not have understood what those buses are so buses in a computer computer are basically these connectors you know they they connect different components of a system so they connect the input devices to the cpu they connect the output devices to the cpu they connect the input devices to the memory they connect the output this i have not shown but basically there is a uh, there is a connection here as well um, it's just too messy to show everything so so all these connectors are buses okay so they, we call them buses they are nothing more than wires uh, they just uh, you know uh, transfer signals from one place to another usb no uh, so yeah i mean usb is also a bus but but basically we are just talking about buses right now they are nothing more than wires okay you understand uh, there is nothing nothing sacred about it they are just wires okay <laughs> uh, so so all these connectors are just wires okay? uh, you just transfer current from one point you just uh, you know, uh, the, the current flows from point A to point B. That's it. Uh, call registers. Uh, yeah, you can call registers as memory centers. They are also memory centers. So basically, uh, you have some memory inside the CPU as well. And then you have some memory outside the CPU as well. Okay. So this is used for temporary computations. And this is used by me, you know, the, the user of the computer to store some instructions for the CPU. So they are both memories, registers as well as this. Uh, usually there is a difference in the price because the, the electronic circuit that we use here is not the same as here. So this is usually cheaper. This is usually much more costlier, but yes, uh, for all intents and purposes, they are basically the same thing. You know, they are, they, they are capable of storing some information just like your USB, you know, your, your, uh, your hard drive or whatever it is. So, um, uh, it's this one human architecture is named after a person called John. Uh, yeah, so the 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 memory is this is basically your RAM. Okay, in in again, it is not technically true, but uh, at this point of time, just assume this is your RAM, this is your processor, and this is your uh, keyboard, and uh, this is your uh, your uh, uh, your screen, your your uh, uh, output device. Okay, so one, one way to look at it is something like this. So this is your processor. This is keyboard. This is your your screen. And uh, this is your RAM. It's the architecture of the of the computer. Um, okay, so it was it was first uh, proposed by John von Neumann in 1945. Uh, the principles we don't really have the computers which work on exactly the same principles. But this was this was basically very close to the initial computers that we used. Now, with the help of the source, now if you just want to build a computer that is based on the von Neumann architecture, uh, what would this computer do? It is it the, the overall thing that this computer does is something like this. Uh, it uses the memory unit, the RAM thing, right, to store some instructions. That's okay. Essentially, a sequence of computations, uh, uh, and each computation is essentially, you know, as, as I said, it could be uh, uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Anding operation, oring operation, not operation. So these are some set of computations that I say that your your system can do. Uh, the memory basically stores all these things, and uh, what what essentially it it also stores alongside your your uh, uh, your instructions is the data which is required to operate. Right. So I, when I say add two numbers, it it will the, the CPU will say okay which two numbers. Okay. So even those two numbers can also be stored in the same memory. Uh, not just the instruction, but the data to that uh, data required to uh, uh, to execute an operation that can also be used uh, stored in the same memory. The control unit basically interprets this these instructions in the memory, and uh, based on that, it fetches the expected data from the memory, and then it instructs the ALU to perform these computations. And once the result is available, it stores it stores the result back in the memory at some location. And uh, as of now, assume that there is some mechanism to perform this input and output to and from the memory. You don't have to worry what that mechanism is. Just somehow just assume that we are able to read and write stuff from that memory. And uh, this type of a computer is known as the stored program computer. Stored program computer is basically the basic 
basis of all the computing that we do today okay the the core principles of computing are exactly the same there is a memory where data and instructions are are written the cpu executes them in a particular order so now i have some homework i usually will not talk about homework in the class you know you will have to read this slide and figure out what the homework is uh, so now i am going to stop the presentation uh, yeah any questions by the way sir, sir in go ahead sir in base um, number if we store data we can store much data in the same hard disk uh i didn't get the question what 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 is it i am asking that if we theoretically use the base 10 system in mm -hmm. computers mm -hmm. then we will store more data in the same hard disk we are storing to them um see again it is a very hypothetical question but the question the the reason when when you say more data when what do you really mean more as in more per you per square unit of 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 area um more you know what exactly does it more what was it uh yeah density as in density to what uh, uh, uh density with respect to the the number of uh, the amount of data that you can store per unit area right. or uh, we have a hard disk right so uh, what i understood was ki, agar, like we have one terabyte ka now so in the same size space could we store more data like two terabytes or four terabytes or ten terabytes no so size see the, the reason the, you have to understand that uh how do you store stuff in a particular hard drive you basically store these zeros and ones right and how do you how do you store zeros and ones there is some electronic circuit that can imitate these two states zeros or ones right now if hypothetically i have some electronic circuit that can imitate 10 states will it also require the same amount of space on a chip i don't know it is possible that in order to imitate 10 different states the actual amount of space i require on a chip on, a, on an electronic chip is far more than the two state chip right so then exactly how do i uh, okay i'll just, so, so exactly how it, it is a very hypothetical question can that if i can build a circuits which have 10 possible states uh, will the amount of uh, stuff that I can save is will be less or more. That is very hypothetical because it will depend on the actual electronic circuit. You know, how, what are the properties of that electronic circuit? Can that, uh, uh, what is the difference between registers and cache? For now, just assume they are the same. Okay. Uh, so I'll just talk to you. So essentially, that question is more of a hypothetical question. I really cannot answer it because I need to understand the properties of, of that. Uh, uh, of that circuit that can imitate the decimal system. Okay. Uh, only then can I tell you whether it can store more or less. If you think from that perspective that, uh, you know, uh, in a parallel world where, uh, 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 you know, everything can be imitated in exactly the same way, then yes, you know, because uh, the amount of space that I'll probably require to store binary digits will be more because, you know, as I said, you are only storing five, but in binary, it becomes one, zero, one. Uh, so from if you're thinking from that perspective, yes, you can store more. But at the at the level uh, at the level of your electronics, um, that has to be seen. You know how do you imitate such a circuit? Uh, yeah. So registers. Uh, yeah. Uh, basically, for now, just assume registers and cache are the same. For you, it is exactly the same until you study computer organization. When you study computer organization, you will understand the difference between cache and registers. But for now, you will just just assume that cache and registers are the same. So, uh, cache memory is a part of a ROM or RAM. Uh, so, cache again. I mean, so basically, cache is is not a part of RAM or ROM. Uh, essentially, cache is a part of your processor. It is part of your CPU. Okay, that that block that I showed. It is a very simple block. It is not having that 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 CPU is is a very complicated electronic circuit that block diagram was very simplified version uh, but cache is a part of that cpu okay it's uh, uh, but it is different from registers by the way oh okay sir yeah sir do do threads in a processor store cache uh no no so uh, threads are like this so threads essentially means that if you if you say there is a multi threaded okay so when whenever you say uh, i have a two core processor or four core processor 
it essentially means you have two or four versions of your ALU. Okay, you have four ALUs, so you can perform four parallel computations at a time. Okay, uh, but you still need to have a CU. Okay, the CU is still the same. The, there's the same CU which will which will try to uh, to to control four ALUs now. Okay, uh, and the cache and the registers, all these things. There will be a separate set of register for a each ALU that you have. Okay, uh, yes, but ca but cache. Are you will... not audible? Um, okay. Uh, is it clear now? Uh, maybe there is some issue at your end. Am, am I not audible, guys? There's no voice. Sir, you are audible. Sir, you are audible. Sir, you are audible. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. You are audible. Okay. 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 So, uh, so basically, the cache is a part of your CPU. The registers are associated with your ALU. So you will have different sets of registers for different ALUs. The cache is essentially the same for the whole CPU. And, and, and again, I mean, as of now, as of now, it is the same for you. Okay. Again, even this statement is not technically correct, but don't get into so much of details right now. You might get confused. Uh, for now, just assume that there is some space within the CPU where you can store intermediate computations, and then there is a there is a main memory. You can call it RAM for now, uh, where you store these instructions. What is to be done? Yeah, that is what Shreya is so, right now. Yeah, don't. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It is limited. It is limited. Main memory. Like 12 MB or something. Yes, yes, and and you usually don't need more than that because it is used only for intermediate computations. Okay, it is used to fetch something uh, very fast. You don't really need too much of it, uh, and it's very it, it is very costly by the way. Uh, yes. The, the, the electronics that is used to to create that it is very costly. Um, yeah, Shreya, don't mm -hmm. be confused. Just assume that. Uh, uh, you have a main memory, and uh, then within the CPU, you have some some registers. These registers are where you store intermediate computations. Yes, yes, cache is the kind of little memory you have in the CPU uh, to store processing data. Just as of now, just uh, just just this is what you need to know. Don't uh, don't uh, confuse yourself beyond this. Just 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 focus on that block diagram. Uh, we don't have a lab today. I sent you. You guys don't read the mails. Uh, I sent you the mail. We don't have a lab this week. You know what will I test you in the lab for? What have you learned? Should I test you on on concepts of physics? Right. I don't have that that much of. I don't know physics that much anyhow. So, but but yeah. So there is no lab this week. Uh, there will be only two lectures, and uh, and uh, uh, from the next week onwards, you will have labs. Okay, guys. Any questions? Anything that. We should talk about. I have already overshoot my time. I thought this lecture will be only twenty minutes, but it is good, by the way. I know uh, you guys asked questions. I am very happy. Uh, sir, so, yeah. Sir, I have this book. Let us see by Yashwan P. Kanetkar. Is this good yeah. for learning? It is I, good. I the book. The, the problem is that yes, the Let us see book. It is a very easy book to read, but it is very voluminous. It's like that thick, right? Uh, so sometimes you'll get bored reading Let Us See. Uh, that is the only problem with Let Us See. Let Us See is a very good book. It's a very basic book. Uh, so, but, but the only problem is you you need patience to learn to read from Let Us See. It will, uh, you know. Problem. Ah, then fine. Then fine. You, I have no issues. Thanks. Thanks. So. Which we store is the combination. Yes, yes, yes. You know everything that you store in in on your computers. They are basically a combination of zeros and ones. And uh, yeah, I will share. I will share the lectures lecture recording. This is being recorded anyhow. Uh, I'm not sure when will I get the recording from Webex in Google Meet. You usually get it within half an hour of the meetings. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, I'm not sure when will I get it. As soon as I get it. Uh, uh, these homeworks are not submittable homeworks. You have to read basically. Attendance, yeah. Whomsoever has not given me attendance, please. Uh, I have one zero one people on my attendance. Um, uh, please, uh, if you are, if you have not uh, marked your attendance till now, please send me an email. Forty one. Uh, what exactly is forty one? I don't know. Uh, 
yeah it's okay so uh, if you submitted the form successfully it should be there uh, if you are in doubt you can uh, is there a way i can share this just a minute sir can you confirm us all that uh, if we have uh, received uh... what i'll do is let us uh, what i will do is i'll download this uh, this sheet and i will send it to the batch okay if you do not have your number there please please respond back to me i hate taking attendance let me be very honest but but i have already been burned i i did not take attendance with the btech third semester guys this time um and now i have been asked why didn't you take the attendance so that is the only reason i am taking attendance i have no if you know if if it is in my hands i'll give all of you 100% attendance because uh, i don't think i can keep you uh, uh, keep you engaged with my learning things if uh, if i start taking attendance you if you want to learn come to my lectures otherwise it's perfectly fine you know uh, i am not the only place where you can learn c or programming from there are n number of of ways in which you can learn programming at the end of the day the idea is that you learn it right if you can uh, learn it from some other source i am very happy okay uh, i have no issues i have no problems with you not attending my lecture okay sir uh, how does the storage work sir um storage so basically it's like this at the end of the day you have to make some electronic circuits okay and these electronic circuits uh, they have different types of properties you will study this in your uh, switching theory and uh, and logic design subjects that uh, some of these storages some of these circuits they can only uh, you know get, uh, they can only hold on to the value until you keep them powered okay and these are these are the uh, kind of circuits you use to build a ram so everything in the ram goes away as soon as uh, you know once you power off the machine um, but uh, we will learn c through uh, you can learn cpp from your seniors <laughs> so uh, so uh, but for for hard drives you know the hard drives that we use they have a different type of circuit so where even if you take out the power that value still remains there how exactly it is fit that i that is beyond my my can i cannot teach you that it is something that your electronics guys will teach you um but the idea is that uh, you have two types of storage systems two types of electronic circuits one where the value is retained till you power keep them powered and the other is where the the value is is uh, you know uh, uh, the value is it, it basically persists okay even if there is no power the value persists so your hard drives your usb drives they are basically having electronic circuits of that type which once you store something it remains there ram cache registers they are all the electronic circuits of the other type if you when till you keep them powered they'll keep your data the moment you take out the power the data goes okay okay sir and right, any other queries guys i have sorry i have already taken a lot of time um and uh, uh, yeah rom rom is again i mean let's not go into that detail rom is is another type basically uh, rom is uh, is a kind of memory where you can only write once okay and then it 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 simply persists uh, where what i was telling him was about uh, you know a, a memory where you can actually read and write multiple times um and as i said i'm sorry guys if you already have a class i don't want to be scolded by the other faculty members so so uh, if you have any more queries i am always uh, available on email um and we will have uh, one digression is basically it is not really a part of the uh, of the c language or uh, or the programming as such but as i said right once in a while i will talk to you guys about systems okay systems in general um, you will have a system management course i'm not sure what is the syllabus of that course if any one of you have that course please send it to me i will be very happy to look at what they are teaching in system management um but i i i actually did not know that they have something like system management so some parts of system management i will also cover in the in digression lectures yeah i know so that is what you just send me the the, the syllabus probably i will have a look um, any other queries guys i i'm sorry again i have ram also work on speed apart from storage ram what also works on speed uh what i don't get the question speed what what does it mean ram works on speed means 
does ram also increase the speed performance uh, uh, so it's like this like you, when you start reading so when you start reading about computer science you'll actually know that different types of memory will have different performance attributes okay some are very fast some are very slow um ram is is somewhat in between okay it's neither too fast neither too slow uh, it's faster than your your hard drive but it is slower than your registers and cache sir is ssd a good substitute of ram is is what ssd uh no ssd is a good substitute for your uh, disk based hard drives i don't know whether th those hard drives are still there or not uh, there used to be a disk based hard drive uh, you will uh, i'm not sure so you will basically study about it in the operating systems course how what are these disks and how data is stored on it um uh but but yeah so the ssd hard drives are are a different they don't have disks okay they have registers uh they have these capacitors which store some stuff um but uh, but yeah ssds are faster than your disks but they are not faster than your ram okay sir okay any other queries guys and i am again saying sorry because i have already overshoot uh, is there a lecture that you guys have i don't want to be scolded by your other faculty no, sir, we don't have any lectures no, sir. Now. so we don't have any other lecture after this one so okay. we are totally fine right okay fine to submit my attendance uh, uh uh i'll so what i'll do is this i'll basically send you over this uh, i have 104 responses already um it is possible that you you will be only able to submit this form once if if somehow it got submitted but uh, you did not know then you won't be able to submit it again um but uh, what i'll do is i'll just uh, email this sheet to you if any one of you do not find your name your roll number in the sheet please send an email to me okay um and uh, and any other queries guys sorry i should not have asked you should, you guys can probably oh i only have 104 participants so i think the 104 thing is 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 accurate uh sir it was 111 2 seconds ago yes sir it was 111 okay okay yeah so then then i think it's it's fine right so basically uh, we have only 7 8 people who have not been able to mark that i will do anyhow manually so uh, uh see i have to use these things because uh, as i said uh, thank you ayush uh, i have to do this because it is a part of the administrative thing uh, i don't really like bugging students for attendance but uh, i have to do it anyhow so uh, okay guys so any any other queries or uh, we'll we'll just break and uh, we'll uh, we'll sit again tomorrow and who was sai it was sai right who 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 uh, was yes, yes uh, prasad yeah hi sai hi prasad uh, yes. what is you, you, Hi, Sai Prasad, whatever you call it. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so, did you understand the lecture? Yes, sir. Uh, I enjoyed pretty much, and and okay. I also had some background to Boolean algebra and all, so I could enjoy this lecture very much. And all, uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. I'm probably at fault for uh, not uh, spending much time on Boolean algebra, but then again, this is not really something that uh, is part of this uh, course. You will study Boolean algebra at depth and. Uh, you know maybe someone can also send me the course of your electronics uh, 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 subject okay i'll just have a look what they are teaching in electronics um, maybe some of the queries that you had today could probably be also fired at your electronics teacher okay um, so uh, so we don't, don't have our electronics uh, syllabus yet with us we still haven't uh, okay it. okay so you, you can just ask your faculty member uh, whom server is teaching um because uh, as i said you understand it that basically this is all in a layer you have to understand this that uh, i i i can i only have the capacity to teach you programming and even this is not really a, my job you know this if you have a systems management course i hope that you that person will cover everything that i covered today okay i just wanted to to give you a a, a brief because uh, i don't assume any one of you to have any background in computer science so so today's lecture and the lecture tomorrow and day after tomorrow uh, if you don't have a background in computer science these are very important lectures no, not day after tomorrow we'll actually have two lectures to tomorrow itself it, they are basically half an hour lectures so so please 
please uh, make sure that you attend those lectures and uh, hdd connected with cash don't worry about those things okay uh, uh, as of now uh, i understand i'm actually, in fact what you should do is you should start sending me emails okay because uh, uh, i am a person of email i have i have lived a life of emails so you can start sending me emails if you have any any interesting queries first of all uh, ask these questions on uh, on uh, uh, you know, uh, you, you can ask these questions in com in the coming lectures as well. But uh, if you have any more queries, have a look at Google. Google is your best friend. Uh, try to find your answers. If you still can't find it, I'm still there, right? So you can always uh, and and of course you can talk to each other. <laughs> uh, any other queries, guys? Okay, so uh, uh, thank you for being so patient and. Uh, uh, We'll 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 join again tomorrow. I'll I'll send you the. Here's the thing. Probably uh, we can we can use the same meeting link. I'll just come on the same meeting link. I don't want to create another another lecture meeting on Webex. I hate Webex. Uh, so uh, you know we'll 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 just uh, use the same meeting link for tomorrow as well. Okay, guys. Okay. Uh, you know have have a nice time. Okay. Bye, guys. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you